I want to say bom dia or buenos dias to our Portuguese and Spanish speaking attendees. Visual Studio fans, listen up because there are new features you just got to see within the Docker container tool in MVS. And here to take us through a live demo is my fellow PM from the Visual Studio team, Uchen Nakari. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks, Myra. And hey, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Um, so in this release, the Docker tools team listened to plenty of feedback from our customers and did the work to make it simpler to interact with containers, view their contents, and to run multi-service cloud-native applications. Um, so here, I'm going to show off a few of our awesome new features. All right, so um, as you can see here, I'm starting off with an ASP.NET Core web app, and I've added Docker orchestration support with Compose. And so as I hit F5 to run the project, it builds the Compose file I just scaffolded. To get to the container tool window, just go to View, Other Windows, and then Containers. Here, uh, this website uses a Redis cache to store the number of times we click the Home button, and that'll be important a little bit later. So uh, in the Containers tool window, you're now able to see each volume associated with a running container Think of a volume like a shared folder between your PC and a container. Also, you can quickly open folders on your container to interact with its contents. So we're excited to save you plenty of time. Uh, you can explore the labels in both your containers and images. Plus, you can tag an image with just the right click. Here, I, I'm writing a tag, you're it. Also, um, a quick tip is you can now hit Control, Shift, and click multiple containers to run, stop, or as I'm going to show, delete all of them at once. But what do I do if I don't want to run all of the services in my Compose file and I just want to run a few of them? Well, let me introduce you to our new Docker Compose launch profiles. Um, I'm going to create a new profile called No Redis and select the Compose profile to filter out just my Redis service. Only .NET services are available for debugging at this time. And even though, I, even though my new launch profile is selected by default, I can easily switch between any launch profile and the debug dropdown. So after I run my project, um, wait for it, we see that Redis is no longer available. All right, so let's recap. That was, that was my demo, and let's recap. Um, the containers tool window increases your productivity with containers and images, and with the addition of labels and volumes, we think you'll save plenty of time when looking through files and details. We also created new Docker Compose launch profiles to give you the flexibility to customize which services you want to run. So I'm super excited. What about you, Myra? Do you have any questions? Yes, and I'm super excited too. So I one of my questions was, why would someone choose to use Docker tooling? Ah, that's a great question. Um, so containers give you an easily reproducible environment that is either identical or nearly identical to production. So instead of coding on your host machine, developers are able to code with greater confidence and less errors. Um, our Docker tooling basically gives you shortcuts to make various interactions a lot easier, such as looking through container files or being able to open your container, your running container in a browser. Um, and with that, I also want to mention that we have a sister product named um, called the VS Code extension for Docker tooling, um, which we also love. So feel free to check that out as well. And that would be at aka.ms slash VS Code dash Docker. Yeah, so developers can choose their, their developer platform. Um, and what new features are you most excited about in Docker toolings? You're on fire today with these questions. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Um, so we've heard plenty of great feedback from our customers. Again, we love talking to them. Um, and one of the things we're trying to improve um, in the next few months is we've learned that just we gave them volumes, uh, like a quick way to see your volumes. We gave them a quick way to see the labels, but they want more, and that's awesome. So they want to see even more in front of their face that has to do with their containers. And so we're thinking about and throwing around ideas to show you um, if your container is running hot, if you know it's using a lot of memory, and various other aspects of your container in front of your face. Um, and another thing is we learned that the majority of our customers um, and users 
either do some sort of Docker file editing or compose file editing. So we really want to take advantage of both Visual Studio and VS Code's IntelliSense so that we can add more functionality to make um, editing and authoring these Docker files even easier and compose files even easier. All right, and that's amazing. And it's great that your team is listening to feedback and making all these improvements. So I'm sure that as me, that I want to learn more about this. People watching also want to do that. So where can they go to learn more? Thank you for asking. So I mentioned the Visual Studio Code um, link before, aka.ms VS Code dash Docker. And also for Visual Studio, we have aka.ms slash Visual Studio dash Docker. There, our team has put together um, all of the all of the things you're going to need to get started using our tools. So thank you so much for watching, and we definitely look forward to all of your feedback. Yeah, so make sure you give that a try and send that team that feedback. So thanks so much, Uche. Yes, and thank you so much. Thank you so much to um, our awesome team for putting together our various products. And thanks so much to my friends and family all over the world.